What's going on everybody? Happy Sunday, happy Sunday. This is the video I was talking about over time that I wanted to do uh, for this weekend. This is an article I came across from Sports Collectors Daily. I will put a link of this in the description in case somebody wants to go through and read it all. But it talks about PSA's uh, June grading tally, and it's all coming with the data compiled off of GemRate.com. If you've never seen GemRate.com, it's a little bit of an older site that I remember. It's been a while for a while. And what it does, it tells you like how many PSA 10s out of, you know, you could break it down by uh, set or, or the card it's individually itself. It's a really good tool uh, to use. Sometimes you got to play around with it to get what you want onto it. But overall, it's a very good concept. I wish that somebody would make this up incorporating, though, both PSA, Beckett, and SGC to show all the totals in one spot. And I know it would be kind of hard, but when you pull up, like, PSA would all be like one line going across it, and I'll do my example up here because I'm behind to use my pen. So like PSA would be this whole line, it would go from 1s the whole way to 10. Then you'd see S or Beckett and then SGC, all three of them with all their different point fives and everything into it, just to show the totals on a card. I really think that'd be a great tool to have that I wouldn't have to pay for. You know, they could make revenue off of something like that by doing ads on their pages or websites and stuff like that there. But it'd be kind of nice to see something like that. Along with, you know, if you want to put in, like, uh, what stuff's been selling for it, hyperlinks and all that. It'd be kind of cool. Alrighty here. Let me pull this up. Let me pull this up. Mm, I'm going to blow it up just a tad here. Oh, I'm on the wrong thing. Huh. Got the control and the plus, right? Why just not blowing up on me here? Maybe it doesn't allow me. Oh, you know what? I'm hitting the wrong button. That's why. <clears throat> oh, that really blew it up, didn't it? All right. This will be a little bit longer scrolling. So... This was put out on July 6th. Really interesting stuff. Very, very interesting. So here it is right here. It talks about the data compiled by GemRate.com. The company graded about 736,000 cards, over 24,000 per day. Now, I don't know if they do that by, you know, 30 days being in June or just work days because PSA has been working, you know, longer hours and on weekends. <clears throat> but if you look at this, it says it's up 28% since May. That, that's a lot. Uh, there it is. Most of the cards that were graded last month were submitted prior to 2021, which we knew. In all, in the last two months, PSA, they're saying grade 1.3 million, which probably, <clears throat> realistically, they probably got somewhere between 4 and 7 million, I would say, left in there to push out because there's a lot of bulk. And I'm not even sure how much in group submitter stuff because I don't know if that's all counted in the numbers and stuff like that the PSA pushes out. All right. So, here we go. This is off the population report. Over the last 10 years, one quarter of the were 1990s era cards. So 25% were 90s cards. And when you come down here, this is where it starts getting inter interesting at. The bulk of the modern cards graded by PSA, 277,000 were basketball cards, and 50,000 of those were Michael Jordan. Now, if you do recall, they did have the special for the Michael Jordan thing, which would push up numbers and everything like that. But that's a lot of Jordans. A lot. And they it talked about the Collector's Club special right there. That offered a chance to grade the most thing for less than ten dollars a card. I mean, I have stuff in on it too. I just haven't seen mine back. Most of the Jordan cards were from eighty nine ninety one, including twenty seven hundred ninety ninety one Fleers. Seven point six percent of those were graded a gem mint ten, and forty three percent were given a nine. Some big numbers there, really big numbers. They've now graded over 26,000 9091 Fleer Jordan cars. That just shows you how produced that was for that year 
And you all know this is the car here. The centering on these were hard. Very, very hard onto it. I did like having a white border because it kind of helped with the edging and the corners and stuff, but very hard grade. In all, according to the company's population report, PSA has now graded over 1.1 million basketball cards from 2019-20 alone. That is Zion and Morant rookie year. Just think about that. 1.1 million cards from that year. That's enormous. I mean, just think about how many cards were produced just based off that. We're not including Beckett, SGC, and all the other companies that graded cards too from that year. And then all the stuff that didn't get graded yet or is in the queue to be graded. This is what's even caught me more. 53% have a Gem Mint 10 from that year. So over 550,000 cards have uh, Gem Mint 10. That's a lot. Um, like I said with this video, this is not telling you to go sell your stuff or go buy stuff. It's just to really make everybody think and be aware of just how big these populations are out there. And you're wondering why stuff shot up at first and now it's way down. And why it's some stuff still sinking down, some is leveled out. You know, <clears throat> some of it does go off of supply and demand because some people aren't selling and so demand goes up more. It's crazy, crazy stuff. But you guys were in overtime last night and understand where I'm coming from with it. Here's the other key thing. 19,800 were Prism basketball cards. That's a lot. You know how much they produced because now they had Choice, T-Mall, Retail Version. Then you had the Cello Packs, Blasters, Mega Boxes. That's a lot of Prism cards. 11,000 were Mosaic. And over 10,000 were Chronicles. They're all over. They've examined over half a million cards from 1819, which is your Luca and Trey Young rookie year. 52% rating a 10. Now, either people are getting real good with what they're putting in to get 10s, or something, because I could tell you there was a lot of issues with 1819 and 1920. So... It makes me wonder just how much this stuff was produced because going through, look at my own stuff that I submit in, I know how much stuff I kick aside and sell raw because I know it's it, at the time nines were not worth it and still around now, a nine base Zion just isn't worth the money spending to get graded, in my own opinion for me. Other people might want to do it. It's, uh, no, that's the backlog stuff. Okay, here we go. <clears throat> PSA then graded oops 2400 top shack rookies. That's up 61% for the month before and about 11% were graded gem mint 10. So just roughly we're going to say 260 out of the 2400 graded gem mint 10. That's a pretty big number. The other one I looked at they said the 1100 Fleer shack rookies 15.4% graded gem mint. And if this has to be people who are holding the stuff or stored it properly, because these things here, the Fleer Ultras, would be bricked. Uh, if you start looking at other popular cards, and if you guys pay attention, a lot of this stuff made the top 10s, okay? Uh, well, actually not here. It's uh, below it did. 2200 Lubob rock, uh, tops rookies. 42.2% got a 10, which I find very hard because a lot of the retail um, hangers and some of the hobby boxes had a lot of issues with corners. So no telling how many nines were set in prior to this. This is just one month. This is not like over, you know, since the 2020 Tops uh, Series 2 came out. This is just one month. They examined 1,100 Tiger Woods Upper Deck Rookies, 24, a little over 24% PSA 10. This is the one that really shocked me. Now, I was talking to Joey about this. 1,200 Griffey Upper Deck Rookies, only 12 got a 10. That's like a percent. This is why I do believe that the 89 Upper Deck Griffey, it was very well mass produced. If you guys haven't heard my story... 
I used to set up at shows during this time frame, and Upper Deck used to come around with 800 count boxes of this stuff. Like, how many Griffins do you want? Ten dollars, twenty dollars a piece. How many Dale Murphy reverse negatives do you want? Forty bucks a piece. Anybody was set up during that time frame remembers Upper Deck doing this. So there are a lot of Griffies out there, but if you look at the pop report and how they grade on it, with that hologram has to be centered and no scratches and all this stuff, very hard to gem rate. I still think this is going to be one of those cards years down the road that everybody's going to want to have for nostalgic purposes. I do own one. I got it way back in the day for like four fifty or something like that. But the Griffey did go up. It's, I know it spiked down some. I don't know where it is now because I don't really pay much attention to it. But if I w was looking at Griffey's, this would be one. And the other one was the 89 Dawn Rush. Very hard grade. Last I looked, it was under 2,000 graded to 10, and they had like 35,000 or something graded out of that year. So, different things just to think about if you're looking to purchase cards. Uh, that's why I always say to look at pop reports and stuff, because if the card is not serial numbered, it's what I consider a base rookie. It means it was produced a good bit. Minus like this year, if you look at like Bowman when it came out, the Chrome version of like the rookie cards like certain ones like blaze jordan and austin martin you might have got three per case where you might have got eight papers per case or something like that there so just gives you ideas on this stuff that talks about the jordan rookie and all and stuff like that the uh, <coughs> only one extra psa 10 to 318 they've graded more than twenty one thousand fleer jordan rookies this does not tell you, though, you know, how many times people resubmit it. So I know the numbers are going to be off, including nearly five, 500 of them been graded the last two months. Crazy stuff out there. But th that's pretty much what they talk about here on to it, other than you hitting a little bit of the Brady stuff and stuff like that with people grading Brady and Mannings and stuff. But... This here, it was a very good article to read into. Um, it, it brought a lot to light to me of what I've been thinking and kind of seeing going on. And I was like, wow, this breaks it down even more. And it just really starts meaning to me that we're into what they call a soft market or the hobby or the prices have dropped down to where it's leveled out in some cases. But some of these cards that were three, four hundred dollars, why are they one hundred and twenty dollars now? One hundred and fifty dollars? Because you know, if you don't get it, hurry up, grade it, and sell it to go buy something that you know you can hold more long term. You're gonna lose money down the road. I know somebody was talking about the trout with me, and I think it was either by message or by email. So the trout, trout tops trade rookie. Back when that came out. For like that first couple years, like two, three years, I don't think they went over. Like you couldn't get rid of them for like forty bucks. I remember buying like three for a hundred bucks, and I was starting to pick up the diamonds, the cognate, um, and the blue, the Walmart blue version too. And I never got like real crazy where I owned like twenty or thirty. Of them. I mean, I had a couple, which I still do, but you know, trying to grade them were hard right across the board back then. At the same time frame, a lot of people with those trouts, they weren't chasing trout during that time frame either. Just one of those things. So they were thrown in boxes. Heck, some people probably threw them in garbage and stuff like that. I, I'm sure there's a lot less out there. And also, talks back then wasn't as produced heavily as it is now today. So two different things to look at. When you start going into the Walmart stuff, it really wasn't as produced as much as it is today. So I, it's hard to compare a Trout Tops Traded Rookie to like a Acuna Tops Traded Rookie because it's two different errors on how stuff was produced across the board. Especially when you start hitting Walmart versions and stuff like that there. But this is why I always tell people, and I try not to come off like being rude by it, but you got to do a lot of research on this stuff. You really do before you buy those cards. What I do every year, I have a top 25 cards that I want to purchase. 
My goal is to get one off a year, which I did already. The uh, Sidney Crosby Black Diamond. I wanted to either get a 9.5 or a 10. Yeah, I went with a 9.5 on too, just because price was more reasonable to me. But, and I pick them up every year and I add something to it then. And I look at it, and those are the cards I want to try to go after each year for my collection. Now, granted, there's always cool stuff that comes along like bat knobs or bat barrels, one-on-one cut autos, stuff like that there. I don't include that in there. But I, what I do is I hold that list, and that's what I concentrate on. I try not to get distracted by all the flash and stuff out there. And if you looked at my video yesterday, yeah, I picked up a Tom Brady stained glass that was the collegiate version from 2016. Cool card to have. The stuff goes up in value, maybe down the road he retires, makes Hall of Fame. Yeah, I'll sell it and I'll get some, put the money towards something on my list that I want to have long term. And to be honest, I know a lot of people also ask me about long term on to it. If somebody came up to me right now and said they wanted to buy my whole Jordan Auto collection, and they offered me some crazy amount of money that I could not say no to, you're right, I would sell it in a heartbeat. Because then I could just walk away, enjoy, you know, life after being in my 40s, and, you know, do some traveling and stuff. You know, I did a lot of traveling while I was in the Army, but I would be able to do it at my own leisure. So, for me with the word PC, it is PC because I collect them. But if the opportunity came and I had a card worth, we'll just say 38000 and say it was serial numbered out of 10, and somebody's like a diehard collector, and they're like, I'll give you 50000 for it right now, cash, I, I probably would take it. I probably would, especially knowing I only have maybe $1,000 invested in that card from holding it for so long. But that, that's just the way I look at stuff, too. As time goes and you start getting older... And I know this is for me, for an example, the more I'm willing to depart for something if somebody's willing to overpay for it to an extent where it makes sense to me. So, but I do a lot of this stuff where I find these articles and read into it because it, it gives me a different knowledge and a different perspective onto it. Just like what people make a comments onto uh, the videos. I don't really ever want to get into like an argument or nothing like that. I, I value everybody's perspective out there. What you see, I may not see. So I try to look at it with an open mind, just to be like, huh, that's different. I like that. You know, it's just somebody's different viewpoint onto it across the board. You got to have respect onto it versus, you know, and they have to respect you're doing, you know, your end too. When you have those two common grounds, you could have a good conversation onto something. That's why I always look forward to. Heck, I didn't even realize uh, Kenny Golden, I remember it now that we were talking about, used to be doing all that stuff on the uh, QVC, QVC, I can't even say, QVC, there we go, QVC uh, show and stuff like that there where he was always a call-in and he owned Scoreboard with all those fake Kobe autos and stuff. Now he has Golden Auctions, he sold it. And now we got all this other stuff going on. It just starts bringing a lot of things to light in mind and you start thinking, you know, is this something I really want to do with this or this here? So, always when you read something, take it as a grain of salt. This here is like solid facts with numbers. There's no market pushing or anything onto it. And that's kind of why I like reading stuff like this here. But hopefully, you know, you guys found this interesting. Like I said, the link will be in the description and everything if you want to look into it. They do have some good articles that come out in the Sports Collectors Daily. Uh, really, really some interesting stuff. And like I said, some of you take with a grain of salt. Um, I still want to know where everybody was asking last night, though. If you're still watching this, where did everybody hear PSA is buying SGC? Because it makes no sense. Now, I, I want you to think about this. PSA is actually an independent company that's held by, it's actually owned by Collector's Holdings. I know everybody calls it Collector's Universe. I think their big handle is Collector Holdings Incorporated or LLC now, one of the two. But yeah, they own both um, Golden and PSA. But I couldn't see PSA buying SGC. Now I could see Collector's Holdings saying, you know what, we want more of the cake. 
or more of the pie. We're going to buy STC out. We're going to own two grading companies now. And they might offer them some crazy money, and I would not blame them in a heartbeat to sell out to make their money and enjoy their life afterwards, guarantee maybe their people jobs. I don't know. But I'm just curious if everybody heard that app because I, that was the first, and like there was a lot of people coming to the chat asking about that, and I just couldn't see PSA buying them out because it would make no sense. But what would make sense to me was collectors holding trying to corner a good chunk of the uh, card collecting market community, you know, and owning two of the grading companies out there. That would make sense to me in the long run. But if you're still watching, let me know. I'm just curious what everybody thinks about that as well, too. All right, I've been rambling on long enough, over 20 minutes, guys. Appreciate the support to the channel, watching the videos. I will catch you guys Saturday live for the fixed sale slash auctions. See you all then.